With the 2024 season over, I wanted to cap off with giving my personal top 10 athletes of the year. And this will be across all sprint jumps and hurdle events for the women this year. So no distance and throws, but shout out to Faith Kabiegan, Beatrice Chabet, Valerie Almond, and a few others who of course dominated throughout the year. As always, these are just my personal opinions. And as always, I encourage you to comment below with your own top athletes of the year and why you placed them where you did. Though always I try and be as fair as possible and balanced and all that, but I of course have a bit of bias and it's important that I do acknowledge that. It's also important to note that this is basically impossible to do, right? Comparing athletes competing across different events, right? Some athletes broke world records, some athletes competed indoors, some athletes doubled, some athletes competed, you know, sparingly. So many factors come into play and I personally took into consideration and weighed them based on what I thought was important. But let me be clear, this is taking the entire season into consideration, not just the Olympic Games. So of course that's super important, but consistency throughout the entire year is also very important. But let's just go ahead and dive into my top 10. At number 10, Jasmine Camacho Quinn in the women's 100 meter hurdles. Now, this may be a bit controversial as she didn't win an Olympic gold medal, but she did have probably the most consistent season of any hurdler throughout the year. Olympic bronze medal, and she won 14 out of 17 races throughout the year. Most of them, if not all of them, at really big meets. Season's best of 12.35, which was number six in the world this year. But look at her head-to-head -head record against all the other top women. She won seven out of eight races over the Olympic champion, Masai Russell. She won five out of seven races over the Olympic silver medalist, Serena Samba Mayela. And she wins all three races against the world leader, Akira Nugent. Listen, Jasmine consistency was just unmatched for 2024, which is why I have her at my number 10. But moving up to number nine, Thea Lafond in the women's triple jump, putting Dominica on the map. Thea cleaned house all year, winning both the world indoor gold and the Olympic gold medal in the triple jump. She also had the top two jumps for the year at 15.02 and 15.01, being the only woman to actually surpass the 15 meter barrier in 2024. In her nine competitions, she won five of them, so she does get that winning record, but by winning the big ones that really mattered most and having a pretty consistent season throughout, Thea Lafon is my number nine for 2024. But sliding up to number eight, Nina Kennedy in the pole vault, who similar to Thea, right? She won both indoors and the Olympic games, but the difference with Nina was she was significantly more consistent, winning 10 out of her 11 pole vault competitions throughout the year. She also jumped 5.90 meters, which was number two in the world this year. So not the world lead, but it did move her up to number eight all time in the women's pole vault. And then along with that, four of the top six jumps for the year, Nina Kennedy gets slotted in for my number eight pick. Now, number seven, I kind of went back and forth a bit on this, but I ended up giving it to Gabby Thomas. Gabby Thomas, listen, she brought home three gold medals from the Olympic Games, the only woman to do that, winning the 200, 4x1, and the 4x4 in Paris. And that 200 meter gold was complemented by a world lead of 21.78 seconds. She also had the top three performances in the world and five of the top six performances. So really the dominance for Gabby Thomas was unmatched. Along with that, she won five out of her seven races over 200, and she actually complemented that with a 400 meter time of 50.37 seconds, which got her into the top 25 for the 400 this year. Honestly, this was really, really tricky, but because of the number of losses this year and the accomplishments of just some of the other women that are ahead of her, I had to put Gabby Thomas at number seven for 2024. But with that, number six, Femke Bull in the 400 hurdles and the 400. Listen, Femke had an immaculate year. Basically, really only one blemish to her record, right? That Olympic bronze medal in the 400 meter hurdles. And though it was a slight surprise, in my personal opinion, it didn't take away from everything else, which included a mixed relay gold and a four x four silver, which she anchored both in Paris. That mixed relay, she actually split 48 seconds flat. So that was a massive accomplishment as well. Add to that, she won seven out of her eight 400 meter hurdle races and set a personal best of 50.92 seconds, just the second woman ever under the 51 second barrier in the event. And she had five of the top 10 performances in the event as well. But let's rewind to the indoor season where Femke went undefeated in the 400, capped off with a world indoor gold medal, setting a world record of 49.17 seconds, which improved on her previous world record set just a few weeks prior in the same season. 
So four out of the four top times in the 400 indoors this year, combined with all her outdoor accolades, I had to put Femke at my number six for the year. But before I get into my top five, let's dive into a few of my honorable mentions in no particular order. First off, Jamaica's Akira Nugent in the 100 meter hurdles, who has the world lead at 12.24 seconds. America's Masai Russell, also in the 100 meter hurdles, she won the Olympic gold medal. Poland's Natalia Kazmarek in the 400 meters, she grabbed the Olympic silver medal there. Brittany Brown from the United States in the 200, she also won the Olympic bronze medal. Cuba's Leanna Perez Hernandez in the triple jump. She had probably the best regular season for any triple jumper and won the world indoor silver medal there. Finally, Shakari Richardson from the United States in the 100 meters. She, of course, won the Olympic silver in the 100 and then got the gold medal as part of the 4x1. But now, let's dive in the top five. Cream of the crop, in my personal opinion. Number five, Marley Paulino in the 400 from Dominican Republic. Listen, her season, I honestly think gets a little bit overlooked for whatever reason, but she absolutely dominated. 400 meter Olympic champion, winning in a personal best Olympic record of 48.17, what, moving her to number four all time in the event ahead of Marie Jose Perec, right? Legendary Olympic record back in 1996. And in addition to that world lead, she had two of the top four times this year, including a 48.66. Add to that, she was undefeated in all nine of her races. Again, Paulino's season it really gets overlooked, but in my opinion, is one of the greatest seasons ever for a 400 meter runner in history and should definitely get the recognition that it deserves. But up to my top four, Tara Davis Woodhall in the women's long jump. Another undefeated season that I think may also not get the love that it truly deserves, right? Tara won the Olympic gold medal and the world indoor gold medal as well. And her best of 7.18 meters was only the second best performance this year, right? Milanke Mihambo from Germany, she has the world lead at 7.22. But Tara Davis Woodhall had six of the top eight jumps in the world, along with 10 jumps over the seven meter barrier. Finally, Tara was undefeated in 10 out of 10 of her competitions. So it's really just hard to not have her in my top four. But into the top three. Now, this may be a little controversial and I went kind of back and forth on this, but I have St. Lucia's Julian Alfred at my number three. This was tough. This was really tough because on a personal level, I actually might have Julian as my favorite athlete of the year. But when I'm thinking objectively, there were a few things that kind of kept her at number three. But First off, the highlights. World Indoor 60 meter champion, Olympic 100 meter champion, Olympic 200 meter silver medal in the 100, personal best of 10.72 seconds, was the second best time of the year, only behind Shakira Richardson's 10.71, which was the world lead. But it moved Julian up to number eight all time in the event. She also had four of the top 10 performances and won four out of her seven races over 100 meters. In the 200, Personal best of 21.86, number three in the world this year, and slots her to number 27 all time. She also won two of her four races over 200 meters this year. Finally, 60 meters indoors. World lead, 6.98 seconds, also ran 6.99, had four of the top 10 performances this year, and was undefeated in four out of her four races. Absolutely immaculate year for Julian, and probably is my favorite year for 2024 out of any woman, but because she didn't have the world lead in either the 100 or the 200, and she had multiple losses in both the events, I honestly couldn't slot her up to my number two spot, which is where I have Yara Slava Mohuchik in the women's high jump. Listen, Mohuchik is another one flying under the radar, but arguably had the greatest single performance of 2024. First off, she won the Olympic gold medal in Paris, and then at the World Indoor Championships, she also got the silver medal. And because of that one loss, she won nine out of her 10 competitions. But of course, the big moment was her high jump world record of 2.10 meters at the Paris Diamond League. She broke a world record that stood for 37 years. And honestly, so many women through history had attempted it, but never achieved it. Yaroslava, she did it on her first attempt. And on top of that, she had four of the top jumps in the world this year, which included that, of course, world record, but also 2.70 meters, which is the highest ancillary jump in history. Listen, this was just way too hard to ignore, which is why I have Yaroslav Mohujic as my runner-up for 2024. But finally, I know you obviously all can predict who I have at number one, Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni. It's pretty much impossible to skip over the season that she had put together throughout 2024. Olympic champion in the 400 meter hurdles. Three of the top six performances this year, two of which were the world record performances, 50.65 and 50.38. 
Add to that, she won the Olympic gold as part of the 4x4, running a split of 47.71, which was the third fastest relay split in history. History. And I know that some will say that, you know, Sydney doesn't race frequently, but she actually had a good amount of races all throughout the year. And individually, she went undefeated in nine out of nine races. Three of them in the 400 hurdles, three of them in the 200, two in the 400, and one in the 100 meter hurdles. And to cap it all off, her 400 meter time of 48.75 ranked her as number five in the world this year. 200 meter time of 22.07 ranks her as number eight in the world this year. So let's be real. Honestly, with all of that, Sydney had to be my number one athlete for 2024. But as I said at the top, that is just my personal top 10 with, of course, those few honorable mentions. Give me your picks in the comments below. Give me your top 10. Let me know what you think. Always appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching.